Malaysia is set to abolish capital punishment for all crimes, joining ranks with 106 other countries that have already done so. But we've been using death as a deterrent to crime since forever. So why stop now, especially when so many Malaysians still support it? Today, only 53 countries still have the death penalty and just 23 actually carried out death sentences in 2017. That year, 993 people around the world were executed for their crimes and four of them were in Malaysia. Psst, this data excludes China, which Amnesty believes executes thousands of people yearly and keeps their public records private. In 2013, the University of Oxford's Criminology Department surveyed the Malaysian public about their opinions on the death penalty. 91% said they supported either a mandatory or a discretionary death penalty for murder. The main reason was retribution. A quick scroll through social media comments on local crime stories would suggest that this is still true. But let's explore some of the realities that make the death penalty problematic in Malaysia today. So people have uh, several arguments for keeping the death penalty. The first one is about and deterrence. They assume that because you have the death penalty, people will be less likely to uh, commit uh, crimes. But there are many studies all over the world who have shown that there is no proof that the death penalty is a greater deterrent. In one study by the New York Times over a 20-year period, murder rates in US states that have the death penalty were 48 to 101 percent higher compared to the states without it. Does that mean that removing the death penalty will stop murders? No but it does show that crime prevention is more complex than this deterrent argument allows. Sometimes the crime happens in a moment of passion, and so there is no thinking forward. There's also many studies on uh, crime rates in countries that uh, still have the death penalty and countries that have abolished the death penalty. And you can see that there is really no link. In Asia, for example, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore have very similar crime rates. But in Hong Kong, there is no death penalty. And in Singapore, there is a uh, death penalty which is actively used. A, a safe society is it's not linked to the death penalty. Another criminal undeterred by the death penalty is the desperate criminal. A person who understands the consequences of committing a crime, but is driven to do it due to pain, fear of danger, or as a means of survival. And this is the sad secret of the death penalty. While we assume that it's reserved for the worst criminals, that is not always the case. In Malaysia, the majority of executions have been for drug-related crimes. And whilst these are serious crimes, it's not the gangland masterminds getting hanged. Malaysia's representative for the ASEAN Intergovernmental Commission on Human Rights, Edmund Boon Tai Soon, stated that 100% of those sentenced are drug mules. The kingpins and bosses never get caught. The people who are most likely to be executed are generally from the lowest socio-economic background. The poorer you are, the more likely you become a victim of the system, the more likely you are convicted, the more likely you are hanged. And that itself is unfair. This is true globally. People who are sentenced to death are not the worst criminals. It's mostly linked to access to justice. And most people who don't have many resources, they can uh, incriminate themselves during the pretrial detention. They are more likely to sign coerced confessions. Then they will be provided with a legal aid lawyer who very often doesn't have the experience or the time and the money to properly defend. There is also the issue of interpretation during the trial because the language uh, of the court is not their own language. This is a huge problem, but whether drug mules or kingpins, human rights activists and lawyers still criticize the death penalty because it's unconstitutional. Article 5.1 of our federal constitution uh, guarantees the right to life and liberty to every person. So that guarantee means that you cannot impose a punishment that is cruel, arbitrary. Capital punishment certainly falls into that category. It's not just the execution itself that can be called cruel and arbitrary. I don't think uh, death sentence prisoners are kept humanely. They are generally confined to their cells 23 hours a day. So it is an immensely cruel uh, system. Uh, many people survive like this for decades. Some say it's hell on earth. But don't criminals deserve to face the consequences of their crimes? Don't the families of victims deserve justice? It is absolutely wrong to say that if you remove capital punishment or the death penalty, justice is not served. Of course justice is served. The offender will still be arrested and tried, he will still be sentenced and if it's a serious crime, it will be for a very, very long time. That is justice for those families or those who are victims of serious crime. Uh, society now thinks that the best way to 
stop crime, is by inflicting violence. Just because we want to be safe, we think it's okay to impose capital punishment, caning, etc. Are we setting the right moral example for our children? Are we doing the right thing? The even darker side of the death penalty is when people are wrongly convicted. Malaysia doesn't publish official figures about death sentences and executions, but at least one famous case was a very close call. Sometimes new evidence may come up 10 years after conviction. If you have already hanged him, what do you do? A posthumous exoneration? And this has happened before, as we know from the famous uh, Jean Sinapa murder trial in the 80s. The accused was already on death row. He may have been hanged when at the last minute, as if in a movie, one of the witnesses came forth and said he had perjured himself at trial. And because of that, that accused person, Kati Gesu, was released from uh, certain death. And if you're not convinced by any of that, death row sentences actually cost the taxpayer more than life sentences in many cases. For example, studies of the California death penalty system, the largest in the US, have revealed that a death sentence costs at least 12 times as much as a sentence of life without parole would cost. The Malaysian system also has hidden costs. The death penalty actually is not cheaper than life imprisonment. The legal process naturally takes time. And here you're dealing with the life of a person. Therefore, all possibilities have to be exhausted. But in any event, we're dealing with something that is incalculable. Uh, the state cannot give life. What right has it to take any? To bring it down to a question of dollars and cents is absolute vulgarity. And this is the kicker. Maybe our philosophy of the prison system as a whole is wrong. Justice can be served in many ways. We should always be dealing with criminals in a humane way. When a criminal is sentenced, you have to give them a chance of rehabilitation. Yep rehabilitation. Right now in Malaysia, our prisons and detention centres are in a shocking state. So Hakam reported that from 2015 to 2016, 600 inmates died of diseases and unattributed causes. And these were not death row inmates. Not only should prison inmates be allowed to live in reasonable and safe conditions, they should be given the chance to leave their life of crime. There is always a certain level of recidivism uh, among um, prisoners who are released. But the best way to deal with that is to ensure that during their time in prison, they are given the opportunity to learn new skills, particularly vocational skills. On the question of whether there is rehabilitation programs for prisoners, well, technically there are supposed to be. My experience has been, and I think many other lawyers who work in this area, is that there is a lack of seriousness on the part of the Home Ministry and prison authorities also in trying to rehabilitate prisoners. That should become a priority. The Guardian also reported that nationwide, 58% of prisoners have previously served a prison sentence. This statistic points to a system that is ineffective in preventing reoffending. But investments in rehabilitation programs is shown to have impressive results. Comprehensive research on more than 4,400 subjects found that treatment decreased substance abuse as well as criminal activity and reduced the number of arrests by 64%. Another study found that treatment reduced criminality by two-thirds. The the move to abolish the death penalty is a huge step towards becoming a more humane society. But our perception of criminal justice needs to change too. And while all eyes are on this topic, it's time to ask our leaders to do better for all of us. Rehabilitation and education programs should be made available to all prison inmates who are willing to take part. Because this is how crime rates will really go down. Thank you for watching News Flash, where we discuss and dissect current issues in Malaysia. What do you think about abolishing the death penalty in Malaysia? Comment in the section below. And if there's a topic that you want us to talk about next time, do let us know as well.